Hi, I'm Chris Dixon. I'm here with Josh Koppelman and Brian Snyder, the founder of Madbrook. Hi, Brian. How are you doing? Hi, thanks for having me. Nice to meet you guys. Um, nice to meet you. What, so what does Madbrook do? So uh, Madbrook ultimately do lots of things, but we are launching with a children's brand called Everything But Art. Um, as a kid, I started to draw things starting with a butt shape. Turns out it really engages kids, so we teach, teach kids to draw, um, always starting with a butt shape. And we have our version of Where's Waldo uh, called Butt Hunt. We have a book that's uh, nationwide, and we're launching an iPad app. Okay, cool. Um, and, uh, and so what are some of the key challenges that you're facing? Well, the iPad app should launch very soon. We've, you know, we've done a lot of the heavy lifting, and now I'm starting to think ahead about what the development roadmap might look like. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the work's been done for tablet-based um, distribution, but you know, there's a lot of uh, smartphones out there too. So. so you're thinking about whether to also focus on iPhone and Android phones, and I assume also the Android tablets, and, uh, and what else? Correct. I mean, Nook, Nook Color is Android-based. It's. I, I'd love to get to a place where we're device agnostic, you know, even run an HTML5 version of the app on the web so that it's really truly accessible to all. Yeah, I think so, it's a growing trend. I think it's like the new version of the Facebook app is, uh, is a lot of people are doing what they're doing is basically building an HTML5 and then putting like a, a lightweight wrapper, you know, so it's a native app. Mm -hmm. So you can get in the store and things like that and that makes your sort of porting time like much... Um, and I think there are even tools now focused, like we're an investor in Cabana, which does, oh, yeah, yeah. does that type of thing as well, where there are tools around, you know, making it easier to go cross-platform. But I think, I think to the extent that you can time, you know, sort of new emerging platforms and especially like... You know, when when Android, I'm sure the uh, Android tablet makers are starving for good content to promote. I mean, good mm -hmm. apps to promote, for example. Whereas, yeah, there are 400,000 iPhone apps, right? So it's much, much, much more competitive yeah. there, and probably the Nook Color as well. Like they'd love to feature some really cool app there, and so like. And to to that point, we have a relationship with Barnes and Noble at this point, so that that to me looks like a, a key target to say, hey, we're you know we're a new forward thinking publisher that wants to do it a way that. You know the the monoliths of the path, past you know are still trying to figure out. Um, let, let's tighten up that relationship. In that same vein, what are your thoughts on how we bring together um, the physical and the digital? Um, you know, and in, in some of the ways to to tighten that. Well, do you, do you see yourself being a venture backed? Like that, you know. Just because you're coming, uh, you know, on TechCrunch TV for yeah. office hours doesn't mean that your goal is to sort of raise venture yeah. capital. But ultimately, do you see yourself being a venture-backed company and, and aspiring for the venture sort of return threshold, or do you think this could be sort of a really good cash generation business? I, I think it has. I think the sky's the limit as far as an opportunity goes. And ultimately, we view art as vertical one in what is ultimately an educational platform. Um, we're at, at launch. We're collecting basic analytics um, that are that are drawing based, but then you bring math into the fray, and all of a sudden you're learning quite a bit about your users. So potentially um, venture back. Yeah, the more that you 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 you're viewed as a platform versus specific content, mm -hmm. I think you know improves your positioning overall. Um, you know, when, when you, once you start getting into, you know, you're a, you know, a, hit, a content hits driven mm -hmm. business or physical goods that sometimes, you know, could could make it seem like you're a content company versus a platform company. And so what are the, what are generally because you've worked with lots of companies like that or, or and been around them? What do you see as the, the challenges there that? You're saying for platform companies? Or no, for content, for content companies. based companies. Well, I think I think Josh is speaking partly about just the, the financing challenges mm. that, that sort of venture style investors are wary of what they call con it's sort of a bad word in the business because it's sort of hit driven. I've or something, run into you know. that word. But then you have times. things like Zynga, which is you know is a content business right. and just, nominally successful. So. It just happened to have the hits. Yeah, they have all the hit, all hits. hits. And there's plenty of great content businesses, obviously. Yeah. And I think it just sort of depends on. Um, you, you just need to kind of decide what path you want to take and whether you want to sort of take the path of the kind of the world we live in or there's a whole other world of other types of investors or maybe ideally you could fund the business just based on, you That's know, customers. Right. I think the share. conversation changes after the app yeah. launches and, you know, we, re we really flip that card. And I think, I think exactly. sometimes people in our world, in the TechCrunch world, forget that there's like a, whole, like, there's a huge number of really, mm -hmm. really successful sort of content look, businesses Look at Webkins, there. right? Yeah. It started as a doll company and they built this flash thing after all and it sort of, they, right. they, they successfully navigated both yeah. the online and offline. When I said this at Disrupt, but seven billion butts in the world and, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a big market. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so what are the, any other specific challenges you're facing here? Uh, well, 
we've you know we've built we've built some of the pieces of this platform. We're also thinking of less branded ideas. When do you bring those things into a conversation raising money? Because you don't want to show that you know say that you don't have focus, but at the same time, we've built some interesting stuff, and it might be cool to deploy that in some other ways. When when do you bring that into the conversation? What do you mean by less branded ideas? Well, so everything but art is about as branded as you get, but yep. but we have an app that syncs up and down with drawing, and mm -hmm. yep. there's some stuff you could do with that. I actually think if there are things that, that emphasize the platform versus a yeah. specific title, that might actually be something that, again, if, if you're solving for fundraising, that might be something that makes you look a little broader than a specific title. Because yep. what, what the challenge is, if someone's investing now, they need to decide, are we investing in this hit? Are we investing right. in, in the butt art concept? Yeah. And if butt art works, great. And right. if butt art fails, does that mean the investment fails? Or is there something beyond that? Mm -hmm. And and I think that's the question that investors are going to have to realize, uh, have to grapple with. Yeah. Is am I investing in a title or am I investing in a company? Right. Is it everything but art or is it Madbrook? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Um, so we're out of time, but thanks for being here. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate it.